Okay. For Thank you, Mr. Chair. MAGA Republicans can't let go. That should be the name of this hearing. I'm glad that seemingly we have now accepted that President Joe Biden won the election, even though now we are blaming um, President Trump's loss on Twitter. Can we finally let it go? This is why Democrats are reinforcing that in this hearing, we should be talking about the threats to our democracy. That's the real threat, not an old article that seemingly couldn't reach the viewership it sought through its own platform to disparage and attempt to skew the election in favor of a twice impeached former president who lost a secure and fair election. As a Texan who served in the House and fled the state as MAGA Republicans there, pushed an agenda just as insidious as the foreign interference we experienced in the 2016 election, we should be talking about what they don't want to talk about as they continue to cut you off as you try to talk about things such as interfering with our democracy and how there has been an inciting of political violence against individuals as well as our democracy as a whole. We are supposed to live in the land of the free, and when some people are afraid of losing power, they engage in conspiracy theories and distractions, such as the Joe Biden, a candidate at the time, not government actor at the time, colluded with social media to win. So let me say thank you for showing up for this political theater. Unfortunately, the American people deserve better of its leaders. They deserve a robust conversation around the very real and very present threats to our democracy, the greatest democracy in this world. So with that being said, let me be clear. I believe that there has been testimony previously by Mrs. Miss Navaroli. I hope I'm not just killing your name right now. At some point you stated if January 6th and anything like it that language, if we would have seen that happen in any other country with any other leader, Twitter would have acted completely differently. It is my understanding from this statement, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you almost felt as if Trump was treated differently. In fact, that you may have been of the impression that he was treated with more deference than other world leaders. Is that true? Yes. As I testified earlier today, Twitter bent and broke its own rules in order to protect dangerous speech, like the tweets that were directed towards Representative Ocasio-Cortez. And when we talk about bending, it's my understanding from another deposition that there were actual alarms that would go off if someone would access Trump's Twitter account other than, I believe, the CEO. It was my understanding that alarms would ring within Twitter if the account was accessed uh, outside of a select group of individuals who had access to that account. Are you aware of this being an ongoing practice for other individuals' Twitter accounts? At my time at Twitter, the former President Donald Trump's account was the only account that I did not have access to. Okay, so we know that there weren't individual actors running around Twitter setting off alarms every other day, is that correct? Not to my knowledge, no. Okay, now, as we talk about January 6th, because I think that's the only thing we should be talking about, what I wanna talk about is what, and anyone can answer this question, um, did you see a correlation between a rise in homegrown domestic white supremacy online as it correlates to leading up to January 6th? I can answer that. So some of the things that we were seeing specifically uh, on Twitter related to white supremacy fan fiction, I mentioned earlier in my testimony um, that we saw things like people wishing that the day of the rope would occur. That comes from things like the Turner Diaries, which are again, white supremacy fan fiction. You would also agree with me that it was clear that white extremists were seemingly tw triggered and activated to take action against our very democracy here at home by some of the activity that was going on um, on Twitter, correct? Yes, I believe so. Now, just to make sure that we can summarize what we allegedly are here to talk about, uh, you all would agree with me when I say that there was no physical damage or destruction to structures, limb, or life as it relates to this article, yet we do know that there was actual harm 
physical harm as well as destruction that occurred as a result of January 6th, correct? Yes, people died on January 6th. Thank you. With that, I'll yield the remainder of my time to Chairman Raskin, or Ranking Leader Raskin. Um, thank you. I mean, Mr. Chairman, I, I would just use the second to ask unanimous consent to submit for the record an extraordinary article just published called Twitter Kept Entire Database of Republican Requests to Censor Posts, uh, published on February 8th. It was just published by Rolling Stone. So for everybody's uh, reading enjoyment, if people think it was biased against uh, conservatives, this would lead us to believe it was definitely biased against liberals and progressives. Didn't have you pegged for a Rolling Stone reader, but without objection, so ordered. Chair recognizes uh, 